I said, I refuse. I refuse. I said, God, I refuse to have my prayers not on. I refuse. Every prayer is going to be answered in 26. I refuse to have no prayers answered. No more postponing. The desire of nations. It's time for rain. It's time for the restoration of everything that was ever prophesied by every prophet. So I say to you that the glory of the former house, you're going to check it out now, must be great or, or the latter, the, 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 the glory of the latter house, the last house, the last temple is going to be greater than the glory of the first temple. And the desires of the nations, the wealth of the nations are going to come into the temple. The gold is mine, the silver is mine, says the Lord. But now Peter says he does not dwell in temples anymore that are built with man's hands. So where must the wealth then go to if it doesn't go to a specific temple anymore and now we are the temple of the Lord. So in other words, it's not just located into one place where people go and go and look at the temple and say, wow, look at the angels, wingspans of two to four meters of gold and uh, look at all the, woo! no, no, no. We are now the ones that's going to start walking in the glory of Almighty God and show the enemy and show the world. Man, you can envy us. We no longer envy what you have. You're going to envy what we have. Why? Because it's time for a revolution, for a change of government. And I don't serve a poor government. Now Haggai writes, he says, the glory of the lost temple. And he's talking finances, he's talking financial breakthrough because he says, you have started neglecting my temple while you are taking care of your houses. My temple is falling apart. He's not talking about the body, he's talking about the physical temple that is no longer the way that he wanted it to be like it was supposed to be in the time of Moses, like it was supposed to be in the time of Solomon. He says, it's time for the temple to be restored so that you can be blessed too. But you started neglecting my house, you started neglecting my temple, and now you are also struggling because when you put the money in your pockets, it's like you put it in a hole. It's just flowing out. It's because you neglected my house. And please, this is not a message to get money out of you. I'm comparing temples. So he says, so my temple is looking back. Get it fixed. And then the prophet prophesies. He says, but this is what God says. The gold is mine, the silver is mine, the gold is mine. And I want to tell you, when you compare this temple with the one that I'm going to raise up, which is not going to be built with a man's head, because I don't dwell in temples anymore that is built with man's head. I want you to know that the glory that's going to follow that temple is going to be much greater than the glory because the gold is mine, the silver is mine, and your houses are going to be blessed, and what you put your hand to is going to be blessed, so that wherever this temple now walks, when people see this temple, the glory that's going to follow this temple is going to be so great that even angels are longing to look into the glories that supposed to follow this temple. This judge throws his arms in the air. He says, hey, Yerlikai, this woman is now really becoming a pest. Let me just do something for this woman before she strangles me, before she beats me with a fist, before she rails upon me. She's wearing me out. I mean, this neck, 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 neck. You've got to protect me. My rights are being violated. You've got to restore unto me what I've lost. And every day she's there, she's nagging, she's nagging, she's nagging. The judge gets to a place where he throws his arms up. He says, let me just get rid of this woman. How am I going to get rid of her? Let me just give to her what she wants. Otherwise, she's going to strangle me. She's getting angry. 
So imagine I'm in God's face every day of my life. Say, ha, ah, you promised me houses. You promised me you're going to fill it. You promised me camels. You promised me healing. You promised me joy. Yeah, I want to see it manifest. You promised me that I will not lack any good thing. You said, do not worry what I will eat, what I will think, or what I will wear. For the God knows that you are me, and, uh, and all these things shall be added unto me. <laughs> the next day, Lord, look at this. Ah, uh, all these things shall be added unto me. And Abraham was rich and became very rich. Look at Galatians and the Lord. Now the promises that was given to us. Lord, look at Moses and it. Uh, Lord, look at them. Oh man. Lord, look at that. Lord. Ah. So I'm just reminding God of his promises. I'm not trying to change, to, to, to twist his arm or anything. I'm just showing God what he said. You said you are not a respecter of person. So if you did it for the Jews, you should do it for me too. Otherwise, you are a respecter of person. If you blessed Abraham and the, so that his enemies envied him, his enemies envied Isaac, the enemies envied Jacob, and they became wealthy. And the word and the word says to Abraham, Abraham, I am your exceedingly great reward. Then you must be able to do it for me because it's fulfilled in Christ Jesus. And now Christ in me, the hope of glory, I in him, he in me. And there's no longer the temple that now can people can go and look at the gold and the golden lampstand and the golden laver and the gold. No, no, no. I'm the one that's now walking around with the gold. It's called money. It's called prosperity. It's called fire. I'm the temple that is now walking around with it. And if I see a need, I say, I can help you. I've got it.